hello hello and welcome to Dermor with me Blue and today I'm going to be talking about the big news. Um, Icelander finally hit Living Legend, I believe during the weekend. Uh, she won a battle hardened or something like this which now gives 40 Living Legend points and she used to be like 30 points away from uh, attaining Living Legend. And with the new system uh, heroes rotate out Monday, so I believe that should be today. Um, and yeah, um, for a lot of people this is going to be a very happy moment because people uh, did not enjoy Frostbites. Uh, I'm not one of these people because I'm a degenerate control player at heart. Um, but yeah, we'll have to do this. And now all of a sudden we have a lot of heroes in the Living Legend slot. Well, which is pretty nice, right? Like, I believe at the start of the year we only had like three. And we were talking about when are we going to get the Living Legend um, format. And they said maybe when we have like at least four heroes there. And now we have seven. Um, the next closest thing to attaining Living Legend is actually going to be Fi. And that was a mistake I make. I made during the tier list. Uh, we'll see now when we'll have like a lot more ninja if Katsu is truly the better one because we we had like Katsu and Fi um, in the top 8 of worlds uh, but I should probably stick them together because they uh, have mostly the same weaknesses and strengths uh, into other decks. Um, and yeah, like the, the overall impact of Icelander on the meta, in my opinion, uh, is going to be that Dromai is going to probably go down to like the bottom of A, in my opinion. Um, because now, like theoretically, Icelander was the ninja's worst matchup, uh, even though we saw Fi beat the double Icelander. Um, at Worlds and with seemingly no other bad matchups right like they have an incredible matchup against uh, against Dormai uh, they have very good matchups against the defensive dashes I believe they have very decent if not amazing matchups into the aggressive dashes uh, being both IO and the normal one um, IO can maybe outrace them sometimes but they just have some incredible one hit facts that she really does not want you nor can block. Uh, Bravo is probably going to still stay solid simply because he has like a good matchup into uh, everything else that is not the ninjas. Um, Reiner is probably going to drop down a tier, uh, in my opinion, simply because I, I think he was. He was a uh, bit here because he had like a good matchup into Bravo, a good matchup into Dormai, and a good matchup into Icelander. Uh, but now Icelander is gone. Uh, we're going to be seeing way less Dormai, in my opinion, because of how many ninjas we're going to be seeing. Uh, and Bravo is still like a 50 50 at the very least. And we'll probably see the rise of uh, Agro decks trying to. Um, trying to match the ninjas. Uh, I feel like Brood as a whole is a class that suffers against like hyper aggressive decks. Max is probably going to uh, join uh, Dash IO at like the bit here. Uh, we've seen a bunch of Maxes do alright and I don't know that, that may, may continue. Um, and I'm going to also move Kano a tier. Uh, I mean it's not it's not that big of a movement in my opinion he's going to be like bottom of B uh, but simply the non-existent of another the non-existence of another wizard that is actually good is probably going to uh, make a lot of people kind of disrespect Kano and go with like one or zero new room uh, in their sideboards. Uh, which is going to be actually very rare and probably a first time thing for um, for Flesh and Blood because we do not have a good rune blade right now uh, we do not have a good wizard outside of Kano who you don't really stop even with like 
three uh, arcane barrier if you don't have the blues to support it and Drumai is most likely going to drop down in popularity quite a bit uh, with the rise of ninjas so yeah I feel like you can definitely make the case that I don't know, I, I feel like ninjas right now are just so far ahead than uh, any other deck simply due to like the matchup spread, right? Uh, Azalea probably has like the best matchup into ninja uh, because of like how devastating her attacks can be, right? Uh, she can attack for like 15, 20 um, and still have like a long hit effect that completely shuts down their turn. Uh, Bravo can somewhat do that, but they can run like defense reactions in order to stop Bravo's damage because you only need to block like 8 against Bravo, but you often will need to block like 12, 9 and even more against Zelia. So, and that's not going to be possible. And then everything else seems to just be losing to Ninja, right? Like these are... Uh, Dromai just loses to Ninja, the defensive version of this deck loses to Ninja, just loses to Kudachi alone, I believe. Um, and, and the rest of the aggro decks are just worse than Ninja, because they output, even if we assume they output the same amount of damage, they do not have the own hit effects to support that damage output. And yeah. Uh, technically... I will actually uh, also put kind of uh, Riptide, a uh, Riptide and Arachne, a tier above. And we'll probably, probably move uh, Prism a tier down. Uh, because Prism, like the current, the, the new Prism I feel like is going to be strong and like playable when the meta is a little bit slower, but right now the, the meta seems to be just all out aggression. Uh, and I don't think New Prism can really deal with that. And like Arachne and Triptide, Arachne is going to be getting, Arachne is getting a very cool new card. Uh, and kind of like the defensive plans against Ninja with like Arachne and Tuzuri are somewhat okay. Uh, you can still get kind of high roll by ninja in my opinion uh, and lose but you still have access to uh, a lot of very efficient one card hands that you know like the contracts are very good against ninja because they hit the majority of their cards so it's going to allow you to generate more silver to then generate more masks which is going to allow you to not only block more but also strip even more cards from their deck and stripping like uh, key red cards and power cards or combo pieces from both of the ninjas is going to be very cool and Arachne now with his new specialization being able to uh, dig even deeper for those power cards is going to have a little bit of a better matchup in my opinion uh, kind of like the same with Triptide all of the traps of Riptide kind of hit ninja uh, I still don't think the, the hero is like good enough uh, on his own uh, in order to kind of like justify a big counter into ninja and like the, the problem with those two heroes is that they kind of lose like everything else uh, right like Max and uh, Mechanoid combo uh, is just going to tear through them because uh, they don't have the, the pressure needed to kind of stave him off of the combo. Uh, if Dormai remains there, which is just incredibly bad against Dormai. Uh, Pistol Dash is also incredibly good against those. Bravo just blocking and swinging with Hammer is also going to be incredibly good against those. So, that's about it. Uh, in terms of how the, the Ascent to Living Legend is going to impact like the current meta. The good thing is that the current meta is only going to last for a little bit. Um, I believe in like a month or two, uh, we're gonna be getting the new set. And the new set should have, in my opinion, uh, not opinion, but I believe they said uh, the new set is going to be bringing six new heroes. Um, or, or was it six heroes 
doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just hoping that it's six new heroes, I hope that all of them are um, CC legal. And we don't just get like a new Arachne that's only legal in Blitz, uh, like we got in Outsiders. Um, so yeah, and I hope that the, the heroes from the new set actually impact the map. I, I really hope that that's the case, um, but I'm kind of skeptical they will, uh, because like the new heroes we're getting are going to be Warrior, uh, Brute and Guardian, and historically I believe kind of all three of these have suffered against Ninja. Uh, technically Dorintia can sometimes outpace them, uh, because they don't want to be blocking her uh, down blade and she'll be able to kind of uh, maybe outpace them, maybe outmatch them. Let me just give Dorintia players a little bit of hope, uh, even though I still think she's like horrible into most everything else, right? Um, but yeah, and we'll see, we'll see if Kasai is going to be the same. Uh, Kasai does not seem to be scaling uh, linearly uh, as Dorintia. Uh, she, say, she seems to be a hero that wants to just pull off a big combo, be it with like blood on her hands or her new specialization creating like bunch of Centauri Sabres and then being able to attack with all of them uh, on a turn. But yeah, uh, that's that's kind of my thoughts. Is uh, I hope the new, the new characters um, kind of uh, change the meta, at least a little bit. Uh, but if we look at uh, if we look at the past and how like classes fare into each other, traditionally uh, Ninja is probably still going to be on top of the meta after after this new set. Um, it's possible that the expansion slots actually bring some cards to, uh, to some of the heroes that, that are going to be needed, right? Like we, we can still get uh, like new prison cards, new viscerai cards, hopefully. I mean, he got a new card last set. Maybe new Vin set cards. Uh, that's not just Slay. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about the new set. And I'm also kind of excited for like a new meta game. I'm not really excited for this meta game if I have to be honest, so that's why I'm hoping uh, the new set uh, solves that. Um, so yeah, uh, tell me in the comments how how you feel about um, Icelander going to the to Living Legend, and if you if you agree with my kind of. Uh, Meta call. Bye bye.